Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another Minnesota Twins game review. Wow, what a game that was. Holy crap. Okay, so we won. Um, Minnesota Twins beat the Houston Astros 1 to nothing in an absolute great pitching matchup. I don't care. Maybe you're... I, I, okay, don't tell me pitching matchups aren't exciting because that was probably one of the most exciting games that I've seen this year. And... Besides Baltimore, when we were hitting 50 home runs, which we hit our 50th tonight. I'll talk about that later, but wow, what a game. I mean, against Verlander, I didn't think we had a chance. Not with the lineup that we put out there. Not with Verlander on the mound. And we came out, we, we did it somehow. I don't know. I don't get it. But <laughs> look at the box score. Look at the box score. One to nothing, twins. Okay? Zero runs, five hits, one error for Houston. One run on three hits for the Twins. You don't see that very often when the losing team hits or out hits the winning team. And if you look at the box score on both sides, Brantley had two hits, Correa had two hits, Reddick had one. Everybody else had zeros. If you look at the Twins, <laughs> Scope had a hit, Andreanza had a hit, and Cruz had a hit. That's it. Everybody else had zeros. But what a game. I mean, we'll go through that in particular here. Uh, but wow, what a game. Let's start with pitching. Because Oda Rizzi got his third win of the year. This was probably his best performance that he has ever had as a twin. Maybe in his entire major league uh, career. But that, maybe not that far. But you know what I'm saying. Wow, what a performance. Verlander, check in the loss column. How about it? That's the fourth Cy Young winner we have beat this year. We beat Kluber opening day. We beat uh, Arietta in Philly because he's not very good anymore. Then we beat DeGrom. We destroyed DeGrom. And now we split with Verlander this season. That's incredible. Uh, Verlander lost uh, in, in the loss column. He was one of only like five or six pitchers now in the majors that have at least five starts or four starts or something like that. Four wins. Um, to get a victory or to get a loss. Uh, sorry. There we go. Um, and we were able to do it. So that's great. I think we did that to DeGrom. Obviously, we did that to Kluber. I'm not sure about Arietta, but to put that first loss in the column, we have done that so many times this year. Parker, save number six. We'll talk about that ninth inning. That was a little bit scary. Just, just a smidge. Not really, but just a smidge. So we'll talk about that. But let's start with Odorizzi. Seven innings pitched. Four hits, one walk, seven strikeouts. I mean, this man, you couldn't touch him with a broomstick. You could have gotten the oar from the boat. You still weren't hitting it. I mean, you could have probably gotten a 747 airplane. You still weren't swinging that thing to make contact with the ball. He was almost untouchable tonight. Like I said, Brantley got two hits. Correa got two hits, but only one came off of... Uh, of Odorizzi and then Reddick had one hit uh, and those all came what in the first jeesh I know Reddick had one in the second inning I believe oh here I can I can tell you I bet when no maybe I can't okay but they were early in in the game he was I mean he literally he was almost untouchable besides the sixth inning he had what 11 12 14 maybe pitches uh maximum in an inning and then the sixth inning, he had 20. That's He he finished with what? Uh, I guess it doesn't say right here, but I thought it was like 85 pitches. And I want to know what you guys think. Should he have gone out there for the eighth? Obviously, um, you know, we had rested our bullpen the last couple of days. We didn't put Hildenberger out there. or That's who we put out there, sorry. Hildenberger, we didn't put Rodgers out there. Uh, Parker's obviously the closer, so he can go every, kind, you know, every day. But should we have put Odorizzi out there for the eighth? I honestly think yes. I would have... Okay, here's my deal. If we would have scored another run, absolutely. Put him out there till he gives up a hit. With the 1-0 to win or go lead going into the 8th, it was a little bit iffy. I think I think it was the right move to take him out, but I would have liked to see him go uh, another inning until he gives up a hit. Although then you're running the risk of, hey, that hit could be a home run and you tie the game. I don't know, but that's just my take on it. I thought it would have been awesome to see him go 8 I mean, that is seriously one of the best performances I've seen this year from any pitcher, Barrios, Odorizzi, Gibson, anybody. Um, that's that's incredible. Uh, and then Rodgers came in. 
Um, he walked one guy. He walked, was it Brantley? I think it was Brantley. And then struck out two. Look, He struck out Correa looking. Was that Correa? It must have been Correa. He struck out somebody. I thought it was Correa. It must have been. I, it must have been Correa. And I, I, I don't even know who anybody is anymore because I'm just freaking out about how good how good we did. But he struck out Correa looking. Or it was Brantley. It was Brantley. He struck out Brantley looking. That's who it was. Um, and Because who had gotten on base? Um, Bregman walked. Bre- he walked Bregman and then struck out um, Brantley with a 3-2 count looking. That was awesome. Uh, and then Parker came in. Gave up a hit to Correa. That's where Correa came in. Gave up a hit right back up the middle. And then, boom, next couple of pitches. Ground into a double play. Polanco, 6-4-3. Two outs. And then Reddick grounded out to first to end the game. I was freaking out. But let's uh, let's talk about the hitters. So, <sighs> Andrianza. We're going to start with him. Because that man... I mean, look at the comments in that last video today. I said we were going to lose. Maybe I should say we're going to lose more often because we just won in in a great fashion against, you know, probably the best pitcher in the league outside of Scherzer and, you know, DeGrom maybe, and we beat him too. But one of the best pitchers in the league, we beat him because Andrianza, Ethier Andrianza, hit a home run. That was awesome. Uh, it was in the third inning. So, I mean, still scoring in the early half of the game. The Twins love doing that. They're aggressive. But, hey, it worked out, right? Verlander just didn't have the same stuff tonight, but he gave one right down the middle to Andrianza, pulled that thing into right field. That gave the Twins their 50th home run of the season. That's crazy. Um, I think, what is that, 40? Is that 49 in April? I can't remember. 48 in April. Um... I, I can't remember how many we hit in March. I think Cruz was like the only one. I don't, you know, I'm not going to talk about that. That's not what's important. We hit our 50th home run of the season today. That ties for second all time um, in home runs uh, within like the first 24, 25 games of the season. Uh, the only other teams to do that were like a 1990 team. It might have been the Orioles maybe. And then the 2019 Seattle Mariners. So that's, you know, Mariners are pretty good. But the Twins are up there. We're still mashing the ball. That's great. Even though we didn't hit a lot tonight, the one mattered. But let's go down the lineup tonight. Let's start with Kepler. He went 0 for 1 or 0 for 3 with a walk, but that walk took 10 pitches. And that's what really set the tone for the game tonight. He made Verlander work. And I really think he got only fastballs except for maybe one pitch. And I think he fouled it off. Um, That was great. There were a couple other guys. I know Polanco had a great at-bat. Rosario had a great at-bat. Uh, Cave had a long at-bat. Did Andrianza have a long at-bat too? I Maybe those four guys that I could think of at at least a seven or eight pitch at-bat. That is how you get Verlander out of the game. Make him throw fastballs. Make him throw over the plate. And then when you make a mistake, Andrianza of all people is going to make uh, I'll make you pay for it. Polanco got walked tonight 0 for 3, Rosario 0 for 3, Garver 0 for 3, Gonzalez 0 for 3, Scope went 1 for 3 with a double, Cave got uh, 0 for 3, Andrianza got 1 at bat, um, and he, did he only get 1 at bat? What? I thought he had more than 1, because Cruz hit in the 8th, huh, he went 1 for 1, did he get hit? I don't know. Because he didn't get walked. I don't... Whatever. It's fine. He went one for one with the home run. Uh, and then Cruz came into pinch hit for him in the ninth or eighth. Yeah, it was the eighth. And he got a double. That was pretty sweet. Uh, and then uh, Buxton went 0 for 3 as well. Here's the big thing, though. Seven strikeouts, two walks. We weren't as patient tonight. We were very patient. Um, and ov- it just didn't work out, I should say. We were very patient. We made him work. It just didn't work out in walks-wise. But we only struck out seven times. We struck out 34 times or something. No, 17, 27, something like that. 24 times, 24 times, 24 times against Houston uh, in the last three games. So, yes, it's on pace for that. But, you know, seven strikeouts against Justin Verlander, I'll take that. And, you know, sometimes you just get lucky, right? You just get lucky in games like this. Nine times out of ten, maybe they do better. But, hey, it only takes the one. And the last thing I do want to mention in this video is – uh, if you look at the lineup, I mentioned this is a crazy lineup today. If you look at the lineup, it's lefty, switch, lefty, righty, 
which he could have put Castro in there. A little bit. If he was going. Here, I'll tell you this in a second. So, righty. Gonzalez is a switch. Scope is a le uh, righty. Then, lefty. Andreans is a lefty. And Buxton's a righty. So, besides Garver getting switched out for Castro, you had an all lefty team. That's. I mean, if that was a strategy for Verlander, heck yes. Please do that more often. But it was. It, from looking at it going into this game, I honestly didn't see it. That's why I didn't mention it in the earlier uh, video. But if that's the strategy that he wants to go with, I'm all for it because it worked tonight. And obviously, it's Verlander. He's not going to give up much, but he gave it up to a righty, lefty, <laughs> and um, it worked. I mean, to stack the odds in your favor is what you need to do. And Paul Deli did that tonight. He did it in, in hitting. He did it with the pitching. And he got the job done. So what a fantastic win for the Minnesota Twins. One to nothing over the Astros. It's a big win. We are still 17-9. and Tampa Bay's might win over Kansas City, which means we will still be tied for the least amount of losses in the major leagues. But we also have the second best record in the major leagues. Um, I never did talk about the sixth inning. That doesn't really matter. He gave up a couple of hits. Um, and it was like bases loaded. Or not corners. The corners, I think. Um, but then Oda Rizzi got out of it, but it's fine. Uh, we didn't really need to mention that, but what a game, what a game. Um, and I hope we could just continue to do it. I said we needed the sweep or just kidding. I said we needed the split. That's what I was trying to say. Uh, but Hey, we got the hard one out of the way. Barrio should be an easy W. Um, if we can take one of the next two, I'll take a series win instead of a, of a split. So hopefully that all happens and we come back tomorrow looking for another win. Uh, against the Houston Astros. We really shut them down today. Let's go shut them down tomorrow. So that's all I got for you today. Make sure to leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're a Twins fan. If you like baseball. If you're having fun here. And we'll see you tomorrow for another one.